Welcome to another episode of Hip Hop Who's Podcast. I am your host, Anthony Igadero. And I'm your co-host, Chris Blackwood. What up, what up, what up, what up? Let's go. Today, we got a very special guest. You know, Royalty. It's, it's, it's Women's Month. Royalty. The, probably the best month in the year. You know, March babies. Shout out to March babies. Yes. But Women's Month, we yes. are here. We got a special legend. Kayla Gray is in the building. Thank Let's you. go. Hey. <sighs> Come on, baby. Come in, in the building. I'm like, <laughs> hey everyone! Let's go. <laughs> Welcome. Thanks so Welcome. much for having me. This is such a cool studio. No, thank you for coming on. Appreciate nice. that. Appreciate the love. Um, we got to shout out Rex, man, for making yes, this happen. Do. That's my brother. Love you, T-Rex. brother. Rex. Yes, sir. Let's go, baby. <laughs> he said he actually like sent me a text. He's like, you gotta check out this podcast. I'm like, okay, cool. He's like, they want you on. I was like, really? Let's go. <laughs> oh yes, we have to show Tyrone some love. Yes, yes. sir. Doing it big. We, we're, we're gonna we're gonna get right into it, man. And we just want to start with you and you know how you started your career. Mm-hmm. You know, we got a lot of young black women that look up to you. You know, I have him at my school. He has him at his school. Yes, and they want to know like how did Kayla Gray get started with with you know with her career? Yeah, I think that I had the untraditional path getting into this space. Like mm-hmm. I always say I was the kid that got kicked out of two schools because I skipped so much school. I was couch surfing at the time in high school. But even from a young age, I just always knew that sport was something that I just wanted to be a part of. I don't know what it is. There's like some athletes I talk to and I'm like, like, how did you know you were good? They're like, honestly, I, I, I didn't even try. Like it just came natural. Like conversations around sport just came natural. Debating just felt so good. Watching mm. games just made my heart beat really, really fast. And and I played sports growing up, but I just kind of was like, okay, maybe it was very telling from the universe that this should be a passion of mine. Now, we don't understand purpose when we're teenagers, of course. <laughs> we're just like, all right, there's that thing that we like. Um, but it was actually at my alternative school, uh, Calc, which is still up and running. Um, where's, where's that at? It's like at Danforth and DVP. Shout out, Calc. Calc. You got one. You made one Getting, right over here. Right, right. Hey, Getting bro. people back on track. Um, <laughs> but I think at that time, they were like, okay, like, what do you want to do? And I'm just like, you know what? Life has knocked me down bad. So let me just like go for it in terms of goals and things that I wanted to do. And I said, I really want to get into sports. I don't know what that looks like, but I just want to be in the space. And so, you know, I was in an English class and I was like, I'm done playing it because I'm not good. Okay, played point of high school, stopped growing, um, but I would rather just talk about it. And so they gave me the tools to like really build up my English at the time, which nice. I failed that class three times. So okay. when you talk about, oh, what do I tell my students? See, just say, <laughs> see that girl, Kayla, don't don't be like her. Come to class. Though. Let's Come go. to class. Um, but no. Uh, and then I would eventually like apply to a bunch of universities and actually get in. Um, But I also knew my learning style and I knew that I wanted to do something more hands on right away. So I went to uh, College of Sports Media. And when I got in, I also was given this opportunity by Pimble Clements um, to be an intern for the Toronto Argonauts. Mm. And so that at the same time was happening for me. And I didn't really want to be in front of the camera. I actually wanted to edit. Like I wanted to be behind the scenes, chopping things up and and putting them out for audience consumption. Um, And then it got to year two of school and I'm like, you know what? Let me just hop in front of this joint and start telling stories myself. Cause y'all ain't doing it for me. No, I'm kidding. (laughs) No, but I think at that time, like I always say, I used to like illegally stream ESPN feeds just to see someone that looked like me. There wasn't other black women in sport in this space. So I was not feeling as though this was a job that I could obtain. Um, And so internships happening, I'm getting all these fun new opportunities, calling hockey, doing a bunch of things. And you know- How was that, calling hockey like? It was a big learning curve, but I forced myself to get invested in it because at that time, hockey was king. It wasn't the thing that like, you know, I love watching the game, but I never felt marketed to. Right. Mm-hmm. Hockey is a very white, old male sport. Right. No one's going to debate me on that. Of course, we have diverse faces, diverse uh, mission statements that are now coming out through the NHL. Whether or not we believe them or not, that's a whole different <laughs> podcast. But at that time, it was not for me. But I knew if I wanted to get in, like I just I had to be good and. I knew that if I wanted to, say, get into a space of football or basketball, because those are my two sports, Mm -hmm. I need to really get the tools when it came to preparation, 
really get good with being uncomfortable and really good get good about finding ways that I could still to- story tell, even if the story didn't apply to me. Mm. And so I leaned in fully on the hockey side um, and grew to love the sport. But, you know, I, I think I just kept coming back to basketball. Um, I moved out west to Winnipeg and Prince yes. Rupert as like my first like starting smaller market. Make your mistakes. F up out there. No one's going to know who you are. It's fine. Don't check the Facebook group out there because they're probably cussing about you. Like, right. who the hell's this chick? Right. Them damn comments. My gosh, CFTK oh, TV man. news. You always bring these new faces. I got to fall in love and they leave us. <laughs> no, but I got this great chance out there to be in a different community, a different space. And then also learning how to adapt, find places to find hair because there was no kind of, listen, I was in Winnipeg, I was in Prince Rupert, there were no black beauty hair stores, okay? Like, that was like my number one. I'm like, okay, it's so great to be here in Northern BC, nice eight hour, cool, cool, cool drive. I was like, where's the lotion at? Like, where can I find my cocoa butter? Where's the cocoa butter? Where's the cocoa butter? Great. (laughs) And it was quite expensive being up there. But no, it was great to just be immersed in a whole different community and culture um, and to really get my reps out there. I feel like this generation is so robbed in that sense. And like, you kind of just have to, you're just thrown into it. Like there's no more smaller market because of the ways that the media landscape has changed. So many of those smaller networks are shutting down, have to close their shops or laying off a bunch of people. Like I was so blessed to have the opportunity to really learn and hone my skills and figure out my voice. Um, And then I came back to Toronto as a radio producer at TSN. So people just think I just like popped up on air at TSN one day. It's like, no, I've been in the building uh, for a hot minute, but I was producing radio at the time. And then I went to the website and I was like, listen, I want to head down to these Raptors games. You guys keep talking about the team, but you're not talking about like the full picture. I know the team well. I want to know who's coming in. And I feel like our audience also wants to learn that side too. And so for free, I would wait until the assigned reporter would finish their report on the Raptors. And I would hop on in and be like, and about the Timberwolves today, this is what they're talking about in their locker room. And so that was another way to like also establish presence and get my reps in that way. And then I tried my hand at live events with the all Canadian basketball game, the BioSteel game. Bio Steel, yes. yeah, yeah. And it's fun, fun, funny story about that. My first time I'm cracking TSN network airtime and they, the third quarter went to black. The production truck, like, I think went to black, the oh, blue of blue, a few. Was this last year? Or- no, this was years <laughs> ago. This was like what I think like their first or something like that. And I'm like, yes, guys, I've made it. Check it in the fourth quarter. Like, I'm popping style. I'm on, like, come halftime. Check me in the second half. Second half, boom, no power. Damn. No power. I was like, ah, that's how I said hi to Canada. Amazing. Uh, <laughs> and fade to black. Um, fade to black. And so then eventually I would make my debut on Sports Center. I became the first black woman to ever do so. Um, but it's very, very funny. I don't think I share this is when I was actually at College of Sports Media, at the time I had like my little cute little demo and I was just sending out to everybody. But because I didn't have that much knowledge about the space, I wasn't sending it to the right people, let's say. So you could be like entry level inter, this, that, and the third. And I'm sure those people might still have my demo. I'm just like, I don't don't know how to network in this space. I did not know how to learn how to network within this space. I didn't know about the game within the game. (laughs) And so thankfully, I sent it to the right person who sent it to the boss at the time. And they brought me in. Um, to do a sports center like audition, basically. I was so green. I had no business being in there. And I just remember at the time I was writing, I forget who it was, but I was writing about just like, they're the team you just always are waiting to win. And I likened it to uh, How I Met Your Mother, where you're always waiting to figure out who the heck the damn mother was. And I was just like, now that I think back, I'm like, yo, that on cam could have popped. But at that time, people were not really ready for the mash between sport and pop culture. And at that time, it was a no. So I thought my no then was a no forever. And then it was like years later, I come back and it's a full circle moment. And that's how I broke into the space. Damn. Damn. Oh, you dropped some nuggets, though, in regards (laughs) to meaningful reps. Yeah. Kids, please yeah, yeah, take yeah. this in. Reps. Meaningful reps. reps was huge. 
And you said something along the lines of, oh, man, <sighs> just had it. I just had it. I'll get back to it. We'll get back to it. We'll get back to it. We'll get back to it. <laughs> All right. So how did it feel working in a male-dominated industry? Amazing, because I'm amazing. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> and secondly, do you feel like you get your respect amongst your peers? I don't know. That's a good question. I've never, I don't ever think about that. Like, I think for me, like, I'm not going to sit here and act like I didn't feel any backlash of being a woman in this space. Okay. People would say whatever they wanted to say. Like, nobody had filters, right? But then you're kind of like, shoot, when I come into the room, I don't want to be the person that makes people put on their damn filters of like, ooh, child, kid, kid us in the room. Stop talking how you want to talk. Exactly. Like, stop saying, like, I'm like, no, no, say what you full chest. I'm still here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and so those are the things I felt. And then also at the time, like, when I was coming around, I'd wear a fake wedding band just so people would leave me alone. Like, I'm going to tell you, it's the happiest moment of my life when I got pregnant with my son. And it wasn't the players or the athletes. It was the media as a whole and the landscape around that of seeing this black, attractive woman being in a space of black men predominantly. She has to be here for other reasons. Mm -hmm. She can't just be here because she loves the game or she wants to story tell. There's got to be something else. And so, I mean, I look back on it now and I'm like, that was stupid. But I would just like... I'd have this like fake little wedding band and I, and I'm not the, it's so funny because I talked to other women in the space like that were coming up. They're like, yo, we used to do that too. <laughs> wow. So people could just get off your back. Right. Yeah. Wow. And so, um, you know, that was sort of like my first intro of like, okay, it's going to be different here. <laughs> like you're here, but this is going to be a different kind of experience for you. Couple in the fact that I'm black, a black woman being in this space, it just, at that time, there was not enough room for that. And at that time, I remember when my old boss had was bringing me in. They're like, so uh, can you be like funny? Like, could you be like the female cabbie? And I'm, I love Cabbie. That's Shout brother. out Cabbie. We love Cabra. Cabbie Richards, right, right. Jada Finch. We know it. We see but, you. But that, but that goes to show you how he was looking at me to, to be. Wow. In order right. to be accepted within the room right. i had to come in funny, funny or in a copy paste of someone that they had already accepted and embraced right. they were not willing to get uncomfortable in learning a new person that was black it's regular for people to say oh come on in white guy x white guy y white guy b and they can be three different people and you're just used to it right. but to have the anomalies and the ones they almost have to be so close to the other one for you to feel good about it. Mm. So and how, how that you, was that was the biggest lesson for me. How, how did you counter that though? Just show up as myself. Um, but simple. it's not but the but I say that it wasn't easy. Okay. Still not easy. Cause you still gotta like not let the Scarborough come out of you sometimes. <laughs> um, <laughs> but no, I think, you know, when I had made my debut on Sports Center. This is why it's such a blessing. I was eight and a half months pregnant when I did so. Mm. So not only was I someone who could not breathe because I was, you know, the desk was here. My belly was here. Mm. But at the same time, I was going to be the first black woman to say, hey, Canada, here are your highlights. And so I just remember like the countdown. I could always remember like, OK, three to sting, two to sting, one. Boom comes in the Sports Center intro. I said, if you're going to find some kind of confidence, you better find it in like the next five, three seconds. You know what I mean? Like there's literally like no turning back now. You're about to put yourself out there. So just like stand in who you are. That's fine. And the first couple of shows, I started like today on this and talking different than how I usually would talk because I'm like, okay, if I talk a certain way that they're used to, maybe they won't be like, Ah, she's different. But I'm like, girl, you black. <laughs> they damn well know you different. Like, come on now. And you decide to wear this red dress. And I just remember my grandma calling me and be like, you sound very white. <laughs> uh, like, you, you just don't sound like my grand granddaughter. And I was like, truth, fair. You shut that down right away. And yeah, stop, like, yeah. you just stop because you're like, ah, like my own people can't even recognize me. <laughs> right, right. And I can't even recognize myself. So I'm totally forgetting why I'm here. And I'm losing the joy already in the game. Like, 
that doesn't feel right. And so once I started like peeling back the layer and getting very comfortable in how I talked, how I delivered the highlights at the time, how I delivered stories, things felt a lot more smoother and opportunities just started coming in. It's very interesting. And by no mistake, when you start fully showing up as yourself and deciding to take space in that realm, how much just is attracts to you? I like that. I like that. Message. <laughs> I like these reggae horns. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> um, okay, the shift. Mm-hmm. That's, hey, that's your, hey, that's your baby right go. there. Like, I was just in therapy talking about it yesterday. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Why? How'd you get it started? Why was I in therapy nope. talking about the shift yesterday? <laughs> we could go there. No, kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no um, I think at the time where the appetite for talking about race, racism, police brutality, uh, mm-hmm. 2020, that was, the appetite was a lot bigger. Um, I think I got sick fast. That's one thing about me. Like once you name something, like the minute I don't see any movement towards changing what you have just named, I get really frustrated and annoyed. And then I shut down because I'm like, so you're just going to do this loop to loop thing. Like this is not it. And I just felt like, I would I was getting hit up and everyone knows th- this like for example this year Black History Month in February Women's Month in in March right. the the inbox is flowing yeah right but imagine that for an entire 2020 mm. right and so I'm being asked panel speak on this talk on diversity talk on this but 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 and I gladly will show up for it because I've always talked about it. So it's nothing new. Mm. And it's funny because when I used to talk about it, there was a different kind of reaction. And so I think I just got to a point where I'm like, I'm just done talking about it. Like I'm done because now you're putting me in a position where I have to be in these segments. These little give you this little hot take on why my life is important and then throw it a break. I'm like, I'm not doing that anymore. And so I was like, okay, Kayla, be proactive then. You can't just say you're not going to do something and check out and not come to the table with a solution. And so I just started like writing things of like, okay, what do I want the shift to look like? What do I want to feel like? What does it mean? What is it like? What, what, what is its purpose to do? Right. And so, um, you know, I work with our brand partnership team at TSN. They then pitched it to our sponsor at the time, Dell. And that's sort of how, it came to be, but it's like I learned so much in what it was to create something. And I learned so much about what I'm actually capable of. Mm-hmm. I used to like talk myself out of ideas and ideating because I'm like, ah, it's too big. You don't have the resources. It's not a good enough idea. And I'm like, wow, like an idea literally I wrote down on napkins at the time <laughs> turned into a whole show that got like a lot of money and a sponsorship, you know? So right. it's like, that that was one of the things. And, you know, what's interesting, and I'll share why I was in therapy for, not that you asked, <laughs> but we're going to drop the gems here. Let's go. Because uh, the shift keeps me up at night sometimes. And uh, I'm always like, okay, I'm, I'm always someone who is like, how do, how do we evolve this? How do we change this? And how do we shift the shift? Right. And it was so beautiful because my therapist was like, ah, like, that's... That's what it is. Like you see, people see the shift as just a show. Whereas I see the shift as the spark. Like I want it to be the thing that someone watches or remembers and was like, yo, they did something different. And then they're like, well, why can't I do something different? Or why can't I show up different? Or why can't I talk about something different? Like I want the shift to be like that starter for somebody. And it's just, I think that that's why it keeps me up at night. Because to me, it just means something so much deeper than just a show mm, okay well, keeps me up at night too yeah <laughs> but, but i seen that you you know kobe was somebody that you would love rest oh in peace God, rest yes. in peace kobe arthur ash mm-hmm. was somebody yes. else do, do you want to add to that right now like serena williams serena williams yeah and Not i think now serena. would be a beautiful time to get her yeah mm-hmm. just because you know i i always am someone who loves to learn from other people's greatness what keeps them up at night, um, how they stay and maintain this level of success, what their insecurities are. But I would love to challenge myself to talk to someone in a period of transition and reinvention. And I feel like that's what she she is. 
But she's done such a great job of establishing herself as a woman with many hats. Sheesh. Yeah. You know, yeah. designer, mother, advocate. Yeah. Like she's she's done such a good job, even from a business standpoint, of establishing herself and planting herself, planting those seeds throughout her entire career that whatever she wants to do now, we just we just all gotta sit back and applause. Absolutely. You know what I mean? Absolutely. And I think that. I'm very uh, much hungry for conversations more about business at this point in my life where I can kind of take in those gems of like, oh, how did you see it this way? Or why why were you so strategic in how you put out this narrative about yourself? And right. like, I would love to catch her in this in this time. Is she bored? <laughs> <laughs> Does she want to play again? Does she look at these like young kids like y'all are cute, but not me? Right. Like I like I like I want to talk to her about the real <laughs> about what, what it's like. Want, wouldn't you like to ask her like what were her thoughts was when uh, Drake called out her uh, husband? Yeah, but <laughs> I I honestly think she would pay it the same mind that like her daughter did, which is nothing. nothing. Like who cares? Okay. Like, mm. Yeah, you know, sorry, I had to throw that out there. Yeah. So. <laughs> if you if you were able to ask Kobe a question if he was still alive, uh, what, what would that question be? Like. Uh, One question, Kobe Bryant. Was it actually about winning? Mm. Was it actually always about winning? Because I feel like he was so clear on why he was here. Like very clear, scary clear. (laughs) And I feel like the winning was just the byproducts of that. But we got caught up in the rings and what he was able to do and those moments that like, I feel like we lived in that space. And even now when we think about his legacy, we still live in that space. But I feel like he was totally somewhere else. If hard work was a person. Yeah. Like I don't, I I feel like he didn't actually get caught up with the result the way that we think that he did. Yes. I think the media wanted him to To be result result driven. But I'm like, to me, I'm sorry, this might get a little weird because I'm a very like holistic person. <laughs> but to me, if someone keeps surprising you in the new accolades and the new things and the rings and all of these things, that means that their goal has to be so far because they're just, they're they're growing and evolving to where they actually want to go. Wow. So that's why to me, I want to say like, was it actually about winning? And like, what was the bigger goal? Mm. Yo. <laughs> I love Kobe. Can I snap my fingers? <laughs> <laughs> I, love, I, love, I love Kobe. I love Kobe. Yes. Um, code switching. Let's just bring it back. To Ooh, the, child. Just oh, child. Code switching. Let's, let me just like, we just it. like went here and yeah. he's just like, code no, let's switching. let's talk about it real quick, man. <laughs> Boom. You know what I mean? Because you did mention. Do we have that sound? Do we have that sound? That <laughs> Yo. <laughs> you know what? I was, watching, I was watching an interview. I think it was... Uh, it was a while back, but I think it was you and shout out Donovan Bennett. Mm-hmm. And uh, you guys are just talking, chopping it up. I think th- this time last year, mm-hmm. I think. And um, long story short, cold switching was brought up. Yeah. And then earlier in this interview, you know, mom mom said, yo, mom check kind, me. Grandma, kind of sounded grandma like you're me. white out here. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> and shout out mom for saying that. But <laughs> I remember I remember, I used to get that too. I went to Concordia and I had to, I found myself like just talking without slang mm. a lot. And then it was a wrong number. Somebody called me from Toronto. And I just answered the <laughs> phone like, oh, I'm talking to my guys in Montreal. Yeah. And dude, dude was like, yo, babe, listen to this guy. He <laughs> sounds so white. I was like, oh, I felt <laughs> so like, hurt. I used to call my mom at work. First of all, <laughs> any like first gen kid knows like you best be calling your parent at work for something important. I just be calling her to talk shit. Like, <laughs> you feel me? Like, <laughs> and she'd be like, Elaine Gray speaking. And then the minute I'm like, oh, hey, mom. Kiela, what the hell y'all call me at work? Yes. <laughs> I feel that. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So my, my question is, like, is code switching, um, is, it, is this required for advancement, in your opinion? No. Uh, and it depends advanced to what end. Mm. And wherever you think you're advancing by code switching, ask yourself if the goal is even made for someone like you. Right. Because I got, I got, I got kids. I shout out my, my youth at West. But I get it. And I think we have to first name what that actually Mm. is. Code switching is a deep search for safety. All you want to do is feel safe as yourself. That's it. And so you feel that you're unsafe and vulnerable when you're showing up as is. Ah, 
did I say that too harshly? Was I too rude? Right. Do I sound uneducated? What if I actually answered how I'm doing today? Facts. Right? Would they still want me here tomorrow? Mm -hmm. You're in a deep search for some sort of safety. Because, no, real talk. And I don't feel that. like continuing to live my life unsafe. Straight <laughs> up. You know? Straight up. Because I feel 100%. like some of our kids in the priority neighborhoods, sometimes they got to change their address. Right. On applications just to get a job. And that's so sad. But I don't feel like the energy should be focused on the people that feel like they have to change. We should be looking at the bigger picture of why are we making people feel like they have to change who they are in order to feel accepted in our space. Thanks. How do we it's counter that? Sad. How do it's we counter that? Write it down, damn it! Come no, on. <laughs> <laughs> no. You know I, mean? um, I think it's... it's it, it's external, right? Mm -hmm. So I like to use my voice in calling people out, whether or not they like it or not, um, because I think that it, it lets people know, no, we see you. <laughs> like, you think you're all yeah. cute and slick, and I say, oh, you try a little something-something. Got gotcha. you. No. <laughs> Got you. We see you. Right. But I think the internal push, what I can do is, in my role, continue to keep showing up as myself. Keep talking like who I like how I want to talk. I think that that kind of pushes against what everybody tells me I'm supposed to be. How everyone tells me I'm supposed to dress. How my hair is supposed to be styled. How I should you should maybe pronounce it this way. No, 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 no. <laughs> because I'm realizing it takes so much energy being fake or being. Not being it just it takes so much energy to be something that you're not. That by the time you get to where you want to get to, you just feel so tired. Mm. And I'm not talking like I'd, I've avoided that. I've been there. That's why I'm, I'm speaking from a place of experience. I tell you, getting to where you want to get to is not where you want to get to and you just end up exhausted. So faking it till you make it is like... Forget not, it. Not now. Maybe <laughs> 20 years ago. Yeah, there's... The only time that I subscribe to fake it until you make it is in the internal battles that we have with fearful things for us, right? Mm -hmm. So like, ah, I don't want to do public speaking. Well, cool, you still got to do the thing and how you fake it until you make it in your mind is being like, no, nah, I'm called for this. I'm supposed to be talking. I have important things to say. Right. That to me is faking it till you make it. Yes. <laughs> okay, Legacy Award. Hey. You were, how do you pronounce it? The Jamil, Jamil French. French Award. Mm -hmm. What what did that mean to you when you got that award? Ah, uh, um, hmm. That I need to get good with accepting my flowers. Yeah, that was like the first step. I don't really like when people are like, "Oh my god, you do this, this, this. You're amazing." But 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 that that like, used to bug you. They, when... It really used to bother mm -hmm. me. Maybe it was because I didn't see it for myself. Right, that right. was part of it. But I'm just like, I'm just like doing my job. I'm not doing anything important. We just talk about sports, just sports. Like you don't. You don't really, I guess, notice how much you being you can impact so many people. Yeah. So yeah. now I'm really understanding the power behind my energy. Like I have the power to shift energy in any room that I walk into. So like that was the first like learning experience from that. I'm like, oh, they really want to like award me that? That's pretty big shoes to fill. Right, right. Um, but I think why that will probably be one of my favorites I know you're not supposed to have favorite awards, <laughs> but that's my favorite. And my by blacks people's uh, awards, my favorite because oh, yeah. it was voted on by black people. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, but because those awards truly are come from community, mm. straight from community, straight from community. And those are the only opin opinions I like truly care for is that of my uh, communities. No offense to anybody else above me, but it's not a distinct though. But it's not, but like because my community has, as you guys have probably read, had to rally to help, you know, yes. combat some BS in my career. A whole lot of BS. Um, yeah. that's who I want to and solely show up for. Let's go. Let's go, man. So let's get into. Game, man. 
get into sports. So oh, yeah. here we go. Let's get to some sports, <laughs> man. Let's get to some sports. <laughs> I saw a question about Rihanna or something like that. Oh, don't worry. We'll get there. We'll get there. We'll get there. That's the only question I saw. All right. As a Raptors sideline reporter, mm-hmm. all right, I need you to dig back. Go back. We're going back in the memory bank real quick. Oh, my gosh. What was your welcome to the NBA moment? <gasps> what was my welcome to the NBA moment? Yes. Because you're there. Like, you're literally yeah. right there. I used to sneak into everything, too. That's a funny thing. I, like, literally, I, I would, like, sneak into practices. No, like, legitimately, legitimately. sneak into practices. For free, eh? Yeah. 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 And it's by, it's by the grace of, of yes. Damar and Amir Johnson. That Shout out to Damar. Amir. Oh, my God. I know. Amir was Dem for the times. people. He was for, for the Dem people. Times. Times. No, but, but that goes to show. And, you know, Kawhi was really good at this, too, when he was here. They, they definitely noticed the black people in the room. There you and go. And they definitely made time. Let's go. You know what I mean? Mm. And, like, they made time. And I don't think that people understand the power behind that kind of advocacy. Do you know what I mean? Yep. Like, I'm like, yo, I respect y'all so much because I think you really understand what's going on here. Straight up. They you look know? past everything. They see... Psh, come. Period. And right. let me, let like, me grant you, you the, the grace of an answer if you need, but also just time. And because we see it all the time where, where it's like predominant um, voices, let's say, are not black voices that cover black people. Right. So f- for them to take that time and make that time, I think that means a lot. And I'm still around people like that within the team that truly get it, you know? So could I say that was your welcome to the NBA moment? Yeah. Those guys, just be like, the Demars, the Amirs, the Kawhis. But also, ooh, I, hold on. There we go. <laughs> so I'm not, I don't fangirl over nobody. Straight up. This is why I'm good at my job because <laughs> there's nothing that like, oh, yeah, cool, whatever. Like yeah. <laughs> the, if, if if Kobe around, was around for sure, but Allen Iverson's my fangirl moment. Hey. <laughs> but that's because... AI was like my intro to the league in like mm. the swaggiest of ways, right? Like, like I just love following his career. I loved who he was, how he showed up, how he just like he was just authentic. You know he's what him, I mean? He was himself. He was sure. himself. Mm-hmm. Him. Um, and so when the uh, NBA All Star Weekend decided to grace the city of Toronto at the coldest weekend, Damn, coldest we've weekend never found ever. a colder weekend Yo, since. Fam, it's February right never. now. It's fourteen never. degrees. Never. And what's Imagine. wild? Crazy. What's wild is the week before was so warm. I don't understand how then the next it weekend was it was so brick bad. minus fifty. Remember that. It was so bad. Um, but he had an event and it was called Questions with AI or whatever, and he granted some time after. Quick one, two question. He'll probably never wow. remember it, but I do. We straight up. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that so that was probably my welcome nice. to it. Oh, I could talk to cool dope. people here. <laughs> you didn't. You didn't cop his album though, did you? No. Okay. No. Okay. No. Okay. No. Okay. Okay. No. So, some ask. some no. legacy should never be yeah. messed with. Yeah, and, we just and sometimes that. it's a choice. Yes. <laughs> yes. Intentionally not <laughs> messing with legacy. He's actually happy. But I'm sure it's amazing. <laughs> yeah, it was probably dope stuff. Yes. 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 Uh, you mentioned Kobe. You mentioned Iverson. I want to know your top five NBA players of all time. <laughs> top mm. five? Top five. Only five. And we're of gonna, all and we're time? Go th- out we're of, go out the- of order? I would, I would really like order. I'm an order type of guy. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> this okay, guy. top five <laughs> NBA players. Like that I personally like or that I just think are like all time. Look at me buying time. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm kidding. Mental note. Let's go. <laughs> nah. Uh, five that I have bias towards because I enjoy watching them play. AI, Kobe, LeBron, Jordan. Huh. So this one's tough because I want to go D-Wade. I also want to go Mellow because Mellow is freaking cold. Uh, young Mellow. Mello. Young Mellow. Mello. Young Mellow for my my generation. There you he go. Was sick. Rookie of the year, I thought. I thought no yeah. disrespect, LeBron, but yeah, that was my rookie of the year. Sorry. There's a couple. Well, yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right. Who's the, who's the oh, Mello was the fifth one? Mello was the fifth. Yeah, no, but Mello. we could slide in Steph. Honorable Like, mention. I feel like Steph should be in there, but it's just like, I want to go a little back. But yeah. Steph is an all-time player, period. Wow. Period. You know who's also going to be an all-time player? Like, and I feel like it'll take a while for people to really appreciate it, but they do, is Luka Doncic. Oh. You have to oh, see it man. in part. The only reason why I say you have to see it in person. 
Yeah, he's 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 it's, different. It's it's, it's crazy. Very he's, different. I remember when they came down this past season, and I was like, "Yo, OG's gonna lock him up off talking that shit to <laughs> talking about shit to Iggy." Up. I was like, "Don't worry, Luca's gonna get locked up." And the way he dissected everybody on our team here at home, I was like, "All right, my bad, Luca. Yeah, yeah, my bad. Yes, yes. <laughs> you're you're the real deal. Yeah, yes, 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 yes. Uh, you mentioned MJ and LeBron. Oh, here we in go. In that order, you gotta talk your top about five. It. We got to talk about it. MJ versus LeBron. Who you got? Does the 38,000, whatever he points, he scores. No one's it, ever going to touch that. Does it ever. push? Does that push it? I mean, you? Do they have to consider when, when MJ left to go play baseball. <laughs> like. What, he retired a few times? Like, uh, yeah, like we yeah. lost some good. He, he, we lost what, some how much years did he, he miss? Two, two years. Two years. And that's when back, Houston came and won yeah, back yeah. to back. Yeah. Um, and then he retired kind of early, then came back up, what, 38 and played right. 38 40 or 39 40. So I would go LeBron. It's, it, I actually, that, and it's funny because I said the opposite two weeks ago, but I've had some time to sit and think. Well, what was the things that, you know it what? For you? It was the, it was the scoring. Okay. Think about peep this, okay? <laughs> How many points did he need to get? Like at least thirty six or something. That 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 date. He needed thirty six. He had thirty eight. He got thirty eight. Okay. Now, now hold on one second. <laughs> did you see how LeBron James walked into that arena? Yes, with that that that, that, suit, was, that suit was black. mean. Okay. I'm not l- talking about aesthetics. The man knew he was gonna get the thirty six points. Okay. Okay. Yeah. 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 The man okay. put no. So he said. <laughs> You see this? You see this little record? I got my nice little tailored situation. Yeah. It's happening tonight. <laughs> Imagine being able to be that good that you turn it on the time that you want to get your 36 points. Man, just in what? That's, three, that's three not, quarters. I'm not saying it on, on some like loose, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. oh, he just this oh, storybook. No, there's something to be said about someone that said, tonight is the night. Mm-hmm. Grab my photos. I'm good. Watch me get my 36. Mm. I like the way he was and talking to his kids too. Like, yeah, I get he it? said, watch. I get it? All right, I'm going to get it. <laughs> Not many people can turn that on. Wow. Which I think might illuminate another piece of the conversation of turning things on right. and this off is, when you want to. This is going to be Instagram post. No. Definitely. Kayla Gray chooses LeBron <laughs> over MJ. No, but I think that Ooh. that moment was like, oh, we, we still decide when we can do this. Yes. Yes. That's different. That mindset is, that is different. Definitely That's different. a different, different type of mindset. That's right different. There. Definitely. Wow. So <laughs> we got, we got we, <laughs> I still want to talk about this, but we got to move on. Um, women, WNBA, mm-hmm. top five WNBA players of all time. This is a tough one. Mm-hmm. I'm curious to see who you got in there. Ooh, I don't know if I can give you five, to be honest, because of my. Oh, okay. Swoops. For sure, Cheryl mm. Swoops, Ooh, yeah. Diana Taurasi. Because I know you, you're you're a huge fan of Taurasi. Bird, Staley, I really liked. This is a, this is such a difficult one <laughs> right here, man. Yeah. Because it's like you don't want to put in Candace Parker. Okay. Like, no, and I'm not just like, oh, pick find five, no, five Candace, WNBA games, no, no, five Candace top five Parker, their WNBA players. No, she, no, it makes sense, Candace Parker. I'm just thinking, like, like really, yeah. Would Lisa Leslie get an honorable mention? Oh, Oh yes, yes. Maya Moore as well. Maya Moore as well. And then you have but Reggie I'm like Miller's finding, I'm, sister. I'm finding yeah. people oh, that like resonated to mm-hmm. me. Definitely. I didn't Definitely. see Cheryl Miller, so it's hard. I just heard how great she was. I didn't actually get to see well, her. I love, yeah. those, I love when Miller. Reggie Miller talks about her. Yeah. Those Reggie but, Miller, uh, Cheryl Miller stories. Classic. Lisa Leslie, I did get to see play. She was... Yeah, she, she was different. First one to dunk, man. Yeah, Candace Parker. She's just she's different. She's just yeah. different yeah. as well. Still doing it. It's quite. In- it'll be very interesting to see uh, what this season brings us because of the super teams now within the W. I'm curious to see what Brittany Griner looks like right now. Yeah, you know that's gonna be. Yeah, like just I guess to say like you're saying to see how she reintegrates back yeah. into the game. Yeah. 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 That'll be that'll be the ultimate therapy though for every hooper, you know, once Absolutely. you get in between those four Absolutely. lines. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, Forget well, about and I everything. think and I think too, like, you know, honoring what she had gone through oh, hell and yeah. the things that she'd taken on. Like sometimes it is nice to find your constant and revisit mm. that. Mm. Um but I think I'm gonna let go of what that actually looks like for somebody who has gone through what she's gone through. Yeah. So I don't. So it's like if that if the best is what you can give at that day, that's the best. I'll I'll always take it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. No. Yes. Yes. So 
Kayla, I'm still a little hungover. Okay. From that 2019. Where were you gone? Uh, that that where did you go champagne. yesterday? <laughs> that, Are we okay? That champagne that I was drinking, you know, even though I was at home while the Raptors were in the change room drinking and I was drinking at home. You know what I mean? <laughs> I'm still hungover. My question to you is, what did that 2019 championship mean to you? Ooh, it was nice to say Kayla Gray, TSN. Hey, 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 hey. No, um, yeah, I think it, you definitely feel like, ah, oh, crap, I was a part of something in a sense of like, I got to cover something pretty big for a city that I grew up in. Mm -hmm. Like, that was like what that meant to me. It was like live. really good. Right live. There. Mm. there. No, um, it was, yeah, it feels like such a blur now. Um, what are we, four or five years apart? What, two, 2019? Four years. Four years? Four, yeah, yeah. Geez, that's so long ago. I know. Um, no, I think I think you really see the game a lot differently. And then from a storytelling aspect, you have so much time to really unpack your stories. Mm -hmm. Whereas it's like first round of playoffs, you're like, oh, gosh, let's just get, unload the clip because we don't know what's going to happen. <laughs> right. But like you just see things build and moments build. And it's just nice to see um, someone see it through. There's mm. something about being able to see a collective see something through. Do you remember the days when they said Raptors will never yes. win a chip? Yes. That's why I also I'm remember still when hungover. they said. I also, but I also remember that. Look for the jerseys, for example, how trash they said the jerseys were. What's right. the number one freaking selling jersey oh. on Mitchell and Ness? Like, no. people don't understand. The throw, the Talk to them. Yeah. Right. Talk but to it's them. like, but I think that, like, rightfully so, in a sense, it was new. You have this new franchise. Players didn't want to go there. The rumored KG being the first player, that did not happen. Mm -hmm. I mean, we lucked out with some pretty good guys coming through, but like, yeah, nobody really saw what could happen. And then you kind of get the Brooklyn series. You're like, okay, yeah. we like it here. Yeah. We like this here, right? And then you're building, you're building, but then you're also building such relationships in terms of fan base ties to certain players. Then you get your heartbreak broken in the summer because DeMar's headed one way, Kawhi is coming back. Mm -hmm. But it's Kawhi freaking Leonard. Bottom line. And it gives Stimulus you a chance. Package. It's just like, it, it shows you... Um, how many things need to go right in order for things to work? That's true. When that trade happened, did you think, okay, we're going to win a championship? I right said now. things, you know what? It was the Marc Gasol trade after that. Okay. That was the biggest trade. Where did you, you come? Where did, where, where did we you get got it from Memphis? Memphis. Memphis? Yes. yes. That was the one that I was like, oh, dude. <laughs> ah. I'm, I'm going to be honest. <laughs> oh, we're serious. <laughs> yes. A lot of my friends in America, they, they felt like, we had no chance against Golden State. And well, I because like, you guys I think have, I, I, I'm crazy. I think why the cold, why it was the mark that cemented it was because load management. Yeah. At the time was you know learning. It's uh. And we master we mastered that to a T. We mastered <laughs> load management. <laughs> we mastered load management you just, to a T. You just I guess didn't see what you were right. gonna get right? right. So yeah, no, I, you know, there's as a fan base, you're parting ways with someone who has become such a big fabric of your franchise. So there's a little bit of like, eh, about that. Um, but yeah, no, it was like a salt trade for me. I was like, ah, yes, this is yeah. something's, different. something's different. I knew I knew we were a great team, but it probably when we were playing the Milwaukee series. Mm hmm. What about and that we went, series? We went down. Oh, two. Yeah. To the Bucks. And I had a lot of friends like, uh, you guys are done. I was like, just wait. Just wait. When we yeah, got we that one, go home. <laughs> when we got that one win, I was like, watch. Well, we like, hit that four like, straight. Because <laughs> we started off with Orlando. We lost right. the first yeah, game. Yeah, and right. then we yes, just we yes. cleared them out. Right. And then it was Philly, what, next? Seven games. And then that was just like, once he hit that shot, I was like, it's destined. Yeah. Like, yeah what the hell? Like, that shot he hit and it just bounced. Yep. Like, oh, yeah. Where were you when that happened? I was in a hotel room in Thunder Bay because I was covering The Amazing Race Canada. And okay. I screamed when that went in. <laughs> and security knocked on my door and was like, ma'am, you good in there? I was like, yes, you don't understand. Uh, and so, yeah, no, it was, uh, that's where I was. Whose phone is that? Look at that. It's, des it's destiny calling. <laughs> it's your future calling. <laughs> No, pick it up. Put the speakerphone. <laughs> Who is it? I'll play it. <laughs> Yo. Back to the Raptors. <laughs> right on cue. Back to the Raptors. The greatest Raptor of all time. Bro. Come on, Kayla. Don't, Kayla, don't I know, let me no, down. I, I know don't what you're going to say. I ain't going to say it. What would I say? I'm going to say it. 
What? What? Don't let me know. The greatest rapper of all time. You want me to say Kyle Lowry? Yes. I'll say Kyle. Hey, I see. I, I felt it. I felt it. The growth. I I, I, was, I thought you were going to say Demar. What I feel Big. like it depends what you consider great because Big. Vince Carter. Okay, so I mine are Vince Carter, Kyle, Hawaii, okay. then Vince. Okay. Yeah, I'll put, In that I'll, order. put I'll put Kawhi over Vince too. Yes, I, straight the up. The man came here and said, "Yo." This is, how I, this is how I break down the Kawhi thing, okay? <laughs> I say this all the time. It's going to sound annoying, but here's how it goes. You know, you like meet someone, they cute, whatever. Y'all into each other. They're like, oh, yeah, let me pursue you. You're like, I'm not into having a relationship. Mm, we just friends. We just fucking. Sorry, I don't yeah, mean to Yeah, we swear. friends with benefits. Do you swear on this podcast? Hell yeah, okay. it's okay. But we just, we just getting it in. I'm going to take what I need. You take what you need. So that's that was the intro, okay? Hold on, hold on. <laughs> <laughs> and it was like the person that said, I just want to have yeah. relations gave the other person the best sex of their life for a whole season. Whole season. And then, and then it was so good that that person on the other side said, But can we get married, please? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, we were kind of moving like that. Still. The person, we were kind of moving like that. Still. But the other person said, I "Told you, I Yo. told you what it was. Have fun with it." That's it. And then the other person was hurt. By. And, no. and the other person was hurt. I we've been hurt ever since. But, I, but I told you what it was. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Have fun with it. <laughs> yeah, dude. I like that. I like that right there. Uh -huh. I like that. I like that. I like that right there. Have fun I like that with one it. Right there. Oh <laughs> but like, but when I tell you, when I say like to be able to turn it on. <sighs> And do the things that you say you're going to do is wild in an NBA that employs Somebody. more than 400 really talented people who can play basketball. Facts. That is different. That's different. Definitely different. Definitely different. And, and sorry, Clippers, you cannot get that ever, ever. again. But we'll they never try to, get they it. Try you're, to you're build trying, back though. the feeling. I'll give, you e, I'll give you an E for effort. They, they try to build back the feeling. We, we just allow them. It's yeah, we just allow them. It's all right. It's all right. Yes, it's all right. Yes, yes. E for effort. Well, I'm, st I'm still hurt that he left, though. Kind yeah, of. That, kind that, of. That, that's, that's got to hurt. This thing. Yeah, it, it it definitely has got to hurt, but it's got to motivate people who now know what it feels like to win something. Facts. So Freddy, when I'm not OG. happy with first round exits, or I mean, just OG making wasn't, it to the playoffs. OG, well, respect there. OG, but he wasn't well, the, he really there. Playing, but he was yeah, there. But he, he was there. there. He right. understands. Yes. Right. What did you say about OG? I said OG Nothing. was there. No, no, this Listen, is not an OG nah, slander nah, he, no, moment. No, nah, thank you. Thank, thanks for catching that because mm -hmm. he's about to go in. Anyways, all right. So yo, that's 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 the basketball piece. Yeah. All right. You did mention Rihanna. Okay. All right. All right. All right. So, the Rihanna performance at the Super Bowl. Uh-huh. What were your thoughts? How did it make you feel? Uh, you know, she said she was going to burn through her catalog. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly what we got. We got four minutes. We got four songs in the first, like, two minutes. I said, oh. I said, oh. <laughs> sis, sis said, we running through this. We running through this. <laughs> Make me feel like what, what all, all the songs. Umbrella. Did we get Umbrella? Yeah, we, yeah, did. we got Umbrella. <laughs> we got Better Have My Money. Yeah. We got Where Have You Been? Like, all the things. She's like, yep, we're, we're blowing through this. Yo, Give me 13 minutes and watch me go. And I, I okay. My all-time favorite performances. Prince, mm -hmm. Beyonce. Like, Beyonce can perform. That's, that's, that's her bread and butter. Right? Yeah. But I think with this, what I really liked, because, like, and people will kill me for saying this. Was it the best performance I saw? No. Like, I didn't, performance stand, standpoint, I, get, I hope I'm getting to know. It was not the best performance that I saw. Right. It just wasn't. Okay? Those dancers were working though. They definitely oh, were working. The dancers were working. Were the little working. marshmallows were working. <laughs> they they knew what they came to do. <laughs> but like, but I think what I really appreciated was the moment and what it meant and the message it was sending. Mm -hmm. My girl said, "Be better have my money." AKA like, yeah, NFL, we've seen you messing around for the past couple of years with our people. Right. This is a privilege to have me here. Yeah. And I know that they don't technically run you the check, but run me the check in. I'm going to be on this stage and pat down my face with my Fenty. Yes. And more people are going to tune into your game. Yes. 
that has the privilege of being played around my concert, more people tuned into the halftime show than they than actually the did game. watch the Super Bowl. 118 yes. million. Period. <laughs> to 113 million. So yes. for her to be like, you just gonna get a little two stop, a little wine at the back and, and, and a belly rub. Mm. And I'm still gonna kill your product is some boss ass things to do. Talk to them, Kayla. Like, Talk so that's why I'm like, okay, like two things to be, can be true. It wasn't the best performance, but it was the best fuck you. Yes. <laughs> Yes. Like, yes. and I'm like, and that's who Rihanna is. Oh. You're not going to get all this extra. Ex like, Beyonce is the type of person, you give her three minutes. She, you see her little video, her video from performing at her kid's talent show or something. Or she, she like, performed at, at her daughter's show. Right. And I said, this what is this production. <laughs> she is giving product because she going to do it every, every single time. time. That's every her passion time. is yep. to mix and all that stuff. But, like... Two things can be true. We did not get the esque of production, right? Mm -hmm. But what we did get was like probably maybe even a greater message of you get what you get. And still, when you get me on your stage, please understand this is a privilege. I'm bringing the girls. Mm -hmm. That's right. I'm bringing the girlies. Facts. And the men. Well, from, from a man's perspective, though, like, the marketing. Do you know I went out and bought that sweater? The one where she's holding the thing? <laughs> yeah. Like, with her tattoos? I was like, I, I need this sweater. <laughs> you know how many people are probably going to go look and see, what blush did she reapply with the... Wow. with the? How many people are going to do... How many people... What was the blush? I, I wouldn't know. I'm, I'm just right. saying. I'm just saying. But the belly, though. Yes, but I... But, the belly. But I like that it was subtle that... Everyone and I also like the society has gotten to a point where we're like we shouldn't be asking if she's yeah I got in trouble <laughs> like, like no like, got mad at me like everybody I, I was at a viewing party and everyone's like so we're not gonna address yeah. the come on the room, right? I end up doing it man nobody I got, wanted I got to, shunned nobody for wanted, a second nobody wanted to say it out loud like holy because it could have been postpartum up. weight yes. like you know what I mean like and she still looks bomb and great yeah, nobody wanted great. to say it out loud I was like, Yo, that so belly, I was like I was like oh we have come a little bit further let her announce what she needs to announce. But I love that she said no features. That was dope. That no, was dope. Another message. By no myself. features. By myself. By Drake, stay where you're at. Yep. Jay, Jigga, you could, Jay was up there. stay in the box. Yeah, stay in the box. ASAP, cheer for me from where you're seeing. Oh me. man. ASAP. No features. The only person that's going to pop up in this pot is me and my kid. That's it. And the marshmallow. Period. Yes. And the marshmallows. You, you call it marshmallow. I call them sperm cells. <laughs> Listen. Strong. Okay. <laughs> Coming in strong. I, I just love. I just love that moment. I love that moment for her. Yeah, it was dope. That was a dope. Definitely mm -hmm. dope, man. Got Trump's attention. That's and, for sure. Yeah, and sometimes, <laughs> but again, to the point of code switching. Sometimes you gotta get people, give people what they get. Bottom line. Period. Yes. So imagine if she was jumping through hoops, flipping this, that, and the third, whatever. Yeah. The, the powers that be like, see, they do this for us. Right. They'll overperform for us, right. even if we treat their people like mm -hmm. shit. Facts. Mm. Facts. Facts. Wow. She and listen, I'm just making it. Um, I might be making it way deeper than it actually is. Nah, Riri man. probably Dig got up deep. there and was let's like, "Let's do it." <laughs> Riri was probably like, "Listen, let's just pop off these songs, mix my <laughs> shit, let's go." <laughs> no man. But uh, her 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 impact in regards to 118 people. Yeah, that was wild. tuned in. That means. An extra five million tuned in just to the show itself. Just the show, but only one hundred thirteen million That's all watched I was, the game. Yeah, I so haven't. I, like, I like I've obviously like I've kept up with football, and I think it's a great matchup. Jalen, Patrick, all this stuff. That was but dope. Was a dope but game. I, I'm not going to lie to you. I was definitely sitting through the first two quarters, like. Mm. 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 <laughs> all right, straight. I, and then halftime, I'm like, straight here, wrap up your point. <laughs> wrap up your point. <laughs> Bradshaw, let's go. <laughs> Throw the break. <laughs> Throw to break. No, no, no. Uh, vibe. I want to talk about some hip hop quick before we go. Vibe. They did a top fifty list. I don't know if you're aware of that. No. They did a top fifties greatest hip hop artist of all time. Okay. Jay Z was number one. Why? This Continue. was. This, this is. Yo, Kayla, don't... Yo, listen, man. Oh, man. man. Kayla. No, no, no. I'm just... Okay, go. Continue. Let's go, Kayla. Uh, What's the list? I'm just going to stand right uh, here and Jay Z was one. Okay. Kendrick was two. Okay. So you're going to say why again for that. Uh, Nas was three. Tupac was four. Eminem was five. And they had Drake at number eight. Thoughts? No, that's not... not come on. Stop that. What was their criteria? 
I, uh, that I, I, I wasn't, I wasn't, a, I, I really, wasn't sure. I, it, we are at a point where these lists need to have some type of criteria because <laughs> Drake at eight silly. Who was before? Who was number seven? Do we know? Um, I believe, I don't know who was number seven. Period. Because I you just, wouldn't remember because I why would, the, I think no, 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 but, Andre 3000, I believe was number seven. But see, this is, this is the, the thing. I think I would have, I would have went with Kendrick first. But some people are not ready for that. I don't know. Ken- Keep going, girl. Ke- Keep going. I would have been Kendrick, Jay, Nas. And this is all time with Biggie and Tupac. Yes, but... P- Biggie was number six. I agree with, Andre- with Pac being bigger than... Like, higher up on the list. And- so, okay. Kendrick, Jay, Nas. I would then slide in Drake. Number four. Yeah, number four. I want to say Cole and thousand, 3,000, but that's... Yeah. Cole, what, what's Kendrick. your criteria? <sighs> Whose music makes Jay me think Cole. most? Nas gets you thinking. Yes. Of course. That's, that's the type of music that I personally Jay-Z listen Jay-Z gets you to. thinking. Shout out Nas. Nas is going to be Nas is gonna be putting 50 on the track. Just and like, 50 was 17, by the way. It's okay. <laughs> Top 20. <laughs> I'll take it. Shout right. out 50. You know. <laughs> but and, and also culture movers. Right. I would say 50 is a culture mover. You should be way higher on that list. Not, even not though he doesn't even cold, though his lyrics cold. don't really get me thinking however I did know get Rich or Die trying from front to back mm-hmm. singing, well, that was a, singing that was if I can I would there's always there's certain say, albums that just like you're like whoa but what? for me Kendrick it's like my guy can take five years off come back and be and like like he never left come back and be like that was cute what y'all were running with this is how it how we do it mm. Kendrick's mm. just on another level He's <sighs> he's on another level. We went to his I, I concert. Like his concert listen, and I and was listen, Kayla, incredible. Ain't nobody come on this show and have my brother look like this. Why not? Why? Why? Kate, <sighs> what would your wow. prior criteria be? Lyrics for sure. Because to me, I think Kendrick, I said culture movers. Right. Yeah. I think Kendrick has everybody on their toes. Always. You don't have a Kendrick drop. And you don't. You see how everyone's screaming, drop the music. I don't care if it's finished. <laughs> Run, I don't care if it's still on the, Drop it. Drop it. Drop it. Like everyone just is like, like he, Kendrick to me, I'll say this is probably the best way to explain Kendrick in culture. He's the gut check. Mm-hmm. Every day he comes in with a gut check of like, you know, you can actually get good quality stuff, right? Y'all just be settling up, settling for this little, 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 little. <laughs> like, like, you could actually get m- good music, quality, quality music, is this, is this quality three, concert. Does he have three albums? No or? more than that. Butterfly, Add, when he just dropped. When he just dropped. Damn. So five, five. Four, four, five, because he has Untitled. Okay, five albums. I, uh, mm. me. Biggie. Why? He was a great storyteller, that great Christopher storyteller. Wallace. Mm-hmm. The storytelling is, is great. The, the only thing with... Great imagination, B- too. Continue. <laughs> no, I'm... Mean, oh, yeah. <laughs> the only thing with Biggie is just the catalog. It's just not... Yeah. It's just it's it's not, not a lot. It's not a lot, yeah. Tupac, I, I believe... It's, it's 1A, 1B for me. Um, impactful music, Pac. Keep your head up. Yes. You know... It, it's it just, should be up there. Yes. So oh, it, and I tough totally for me. missed out on my guy Wayne. That's that's and a tough were, And you were just praising. Just praising him too. It's a t- it's that's tough. That's a tough it's list. Tough. It's tough. I don't do lists. Do you I'm going to get ripped apart for t- all the lists I put on this damn show <laughs> Do you want to take Wayne out or uh, put Wayne in and take someone out? <sighs> Kendrick. I got to say it with my chest. Kendrick, Kendrick J, J, Wayne. Wayne. Nas. Uh, Nas, Nas story tells the lyrics, catalog. He got some albums. I think what is it like eight, or maybe more. I think King Disease Four is dropping soon. Yeah, he got. I, I want to say maybe like ten albums. But yeah, but then like Pac is just yeah. Pac, I, the impact of it's, it's, it's it's the impact. music man is just is just crazy. And you for me. you still feel that influence. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you feel that influence. Still. I got Drake at six though. Okay, just outside. Yeah, yeah I got Drake. I think at, I think twenty years from now when we look at it, that's yeah. gonna be a one, two, three. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, we gotta we gotta go back to the it's like the age of fine wine. We don't appreciate <laughs> it's the them. Canadian way, man. That's not even Canadian. He's just the best at it. No, no, I'm not even saying that. I'm just saying like Steve Nash got his MVPs. And yeah, like yeah, yeah. I think Canadians just age. But I think we have to do a better job of giving people their flowers now. Straight up. Yeah. 
Definitely. They're all greats. Yes. Not make no mistake yes. about that. They're all, all greats for sure. You know, we just like to mess around with the list. <laughs> and, and speaking the of the list Canadian, that we're not on. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Don't worry. One day, one day, one day, one day. It's good for talk. It's good yes. for talk. You know. I did mention the Canadian way mm-hmm. before we wrap it up. Um, how do you feel about uh, the Canadian rap scene right now with the artists? Are there any particular Canadian rap artists underground? Besides Drake and. Besides, like, you know, Tory yeah. Reggae. Oh, we don't really talk about that, man. Um, <laughs> sorry. Okay. It's been That's a okay. rough couple of months for the Tories that are <laughs> yes. Canadian. Yes. <laughs> real, real rough. Woo, Johnny Boy. <laughs> um, ah, ouch. Okay. I love Roy Woods. Roy, shout out Roy Woods, definitely. Yes, sir. He's coming out with new music. TV's coming out with new music. Shout out Gucci. Yes, sir. Let's go. That's the brother yes. right there. Uh, Dylan St. Clair. I know it's R&B. Mm-hmm. I love Dylan St. Cl- okay. Clair. Savannah Ray. I'm mm. like obsessed with her. Oh gosh. She's just so, she's like, that's the next one mm. for sure. She's already the one. I don't even want to say next and disrespect the, mm. the foundation that she's already, but she just mm-hmm. like, she's just so good. She's just so good at what she does. Um, hmm. Is there anyone else? I think, that for now is what I'm listening to. I'm All so right. bad at the music stuff. No, that was good. That was real good. Right. Talk to me about Canadian NBA players. Hey. <laughs> and My NBA we didn't even mention that real quick. We got a gang of them. Let, yo, gang your top five right now. Top five Canadian basketball players in the NBA. And WNBA. And WNBA, yes. Ah, yeah. da, 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 da. Shea Gildas Alexander. There's, <laughs> Did you? Y'all be ready. Yo. Ready. Jamal, Jamal, Jamal had that number city. one. Ready. Jamal city. had that number one Bring spot. Home. Yeah, but Shay's Shay's Shay's, huh? Shay's Shay's different. Shay's Shay's different. Shay's a different type home. of basketball. Let's get him back home. Take OG. Nah, Shay. I, I just feel like it's situation why nobody talks about him as much as we need to start talking about mm-hmm. him. Shay, Jamal, mm-hmm. Richard Carlton's dope. Yeah. Like what she did for the women Canadian landscape this past summer. Like she's tough. Held it down. Tough. So I got to throw my girl Kia because she'll probably text me and cuss me off. <laughs> um, and this is out of order. Jamal. Like I just love that he's like Marty. back. Like, yes. like the game Looking is so much like better Looking when like he himself. is back in Looking it. Looking like himself. Um, hmm. Denver's number one too, right? Yes. Yeah. Oh man, let's go. Number one. I'm just thinking if there's any other... Not you got we got Wiggins, you know. It was just champ, yeah, champ, you know? I li- I think Gotta he's in a really love. good situation. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Like that is a cool. That, Don't have yeah, that sure. pressure. We like saw the video from the summertime, but that feels like a good locker room. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. All right. What about uh, Shy from Duke calling it down doing her? Yes. Thing? Oh my gosh. Gotta show her some love. Gotta show her some love for right sure. That's yeah. The little big yeah. sis right yeah. there. Yeah. Oh, I'm here, of course. Um, yes. Like, there's, yeah, I think that, like, we're at a point where it's not like, oh, we're coming. Like, we are. We're here. here. Boom, here. We got, yeah. how many NBA, how many Canadian NBA players we have in Is the league 20... right now? A lot. Is a it lot. 26 or something like that? That is. 26, 27. Yeah. And it's, still lot, go, and it's still going up. Still going up. Yeah. That's a beautiful thing. They want to claim us finally. Yeah, let's go. <laughs> Well, Kayla, man, thank you. Thank this you, was, guys. Thank you. This was you. inspirational, motivational. Absolutely. I had a brain freeze when I, when you dropped a nugget. Mm-hmm. But the one of the diamonds that you dropped was sometimes to get to where you got to go, you got to work for free sometimes. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And Kayla, your, your, ch- your, your book is far from over. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And just letting us know, giving us a little insight on you had to work for free a little bit. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Just to knock on some doors and get through so young people please don't work for free oh my god it's not a diss thing <laughs> if you have to put in a little free labor if you gotta put in a little you know what I mean? cause it's not labor it's if you gotta put in a little free love free love <sighs> yes wow I'm gonna sound real problematic Come spitting on, one thing I'm gonna do is go. spin honey just let's go <laughs> <laughs> that's those spin fingers. yes Yes. Free love, but also advocate for some damn money because un, we do, we're not doing that. And Come big, on, man. Big 2023, know your value. Pay, get paid. <laughs> know, know your value. Know your value for mm-hmm. real, man. But Kayla, thank you. Thank this you. This was super dope. Please, where, can, where could they follow you? At Kayla underscore Gray with an E. Yes. On Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, all of the things. Yeah. Where can they watch The Shift? Uh, TSN, tsn.ca slash The Shift. You can also follow us, The Shift underscore sports on Instagram and Twitter and all the things. I'm really bad at this promo stuff. No worries, you're doing <laughs> it, man. You're doing it, you're doing it. Come say hi. <laughs> <laughs> good, good stuff happens at The Shift. Hey, man. <laughs>
Well, you know, that's what it is, man. We're Hip Hop Me Tubes. Thank you. Keep supporting us. Follow us on YouTube, Instagram, Apple Podcasts, Period. Spotify. Yeah. Period. We're, we're Period. out here. We're out here, man. It's only it's only going up, man. Shout out all the women out there, man. Keep doing your thing. We see you. <laughs>